Hey, it's Fresh in the Flesh with a book review. We got How to Win Friends and Influence People. It says, it says over 15 million sold. It's well over that now. This is an older book, as you can tell. There's another one in red. Remember, Strength Camp Quarterly Meeting. Elliot Hulse pulls out five of them, and he gave them to all of us. He says, you guys, if you haven't read this book, read it. If you, if you read it, read it again. So he, he gave us the book. Really good stuff. Dale Carnegie. We're going to talk about the fundamental techniques in dealing with people. Right? How to not kick over the beehive if you want to gather honey. We're going to talk about how to make people like you and being welcomed anywhere. How to make good first impressions. Easy way to become a good conversationalist. How to get people interested in you. And I'll tell you that right now is by being interested in them. How to win people to your way of thinking. You want to get someone to eat healthy. Well, how are you going to win, get them to win into your mind? How? So here's how you can do it. By figuring out them, who they are, persuading them, and avoiding arguments, you know, never saying you're wrong. The secret to what Socrates mastered, right? Asking questions, how to get people to cooperate, and proposals that everybody likes. We're going to talk about, lastly, uh, being a leader. Talking about your own mistakes first. Helping people save face. Let's, let's dive in. First, I want to talk about in the beginning of the book, I want you to read the beginning of how they tell you how to read the book. It's very good. You can apply it with any other book. They say, read the chapter twice, highlight. They, they give that basic information, but then they go a step further. So make sure you read the beginning of how he recommends to read the book. Okay, let's crack in. Book's open. We got this right here I'm going to share with you. Some things people value most. Health and the preservation of life. Food, sleep, money. The things money will buy them. Sexual gratification. Life and hereafter. The well-being of their children and family members. And lastly, a feeling of importance. And that's what this book will show you. This feeling of importance is so powerful. So how do we tap into that? This desire... To be important is one of the greatest cravings, the desire to be appreciated. So let's look at the power of that. As you see, I got highlights all over the book, as I always do. And I could go over the highlights, but what I'm going to do is look at the principles and break down the principles. I read this in Seven Habits at the same time, and I saw a lot of correlations. Think, win, win. Uh, seek first, understand, then to be understood. Similar parallels in here. So, the first part talks about don't criticize, don't condemn, don't complain. If you want to find out how to not get a mentor, that right there, what I just said, is it. So, I also want you guys to write these down because every journal I ever had, every journal I ever had, I included all the principles and how to win friends and influence people. So... Make sure you write these down, not only in your notebook, but in a somewhere where you can see it every day, every week, and then live it and go out there and test it. Maybe pick one out and say, I'm going to live this principle today and put, maybe put it in your fridge for a week. Do things like that. That's what I did. So don't complain. I, people don't, especially positive people, they don't like complainers. I don't like complainers. I'll shift it back to something positive. They just continue to complain. It's just it's not the best thing to be around. I know positive people definitely don't, don't like it. If you want a great environment with negative, pessimistic, cynical, condemners, complainers, low life, lames, whatever that looks like for you, uh, go ahead and don't follow this rule and complain because that, that's what type of environment you'll create. The next one, give honest and sincere appreciation. This is the only one I'm going to disagree with. I say give appreciation as often as you can, not too much, not like all the time. But even if you don't really feel the appreciation for something that someone's done for you and you think you should give it, give it anyway. It's better than good manners. It's good practice. And then see if you can feel it too. Because appreciation is going to make that person give you more of it. Praise is going to make that behavior occur more frequently. You can see how this is possible, but just know the principle that what you appreciate, appreciates, okay? 
arouse in the other person an eager want. Okay, this is huge. Figure out what they want. Learn about them. But see it from their point of view. Before you ask a question or say something, think, how can I make this person want this? How, how can I make this thing valuable to this person? You could maybe do like some crazy stuff like, you thirsty? And just ask them and then say, oh, it's, if they're not thirsty, say, all right, I was going to give you something. And don't tell them what it is. And then they kind of want it. Or you could be so like, never mind. You could game them. You could do whatever you want. Rouse in the person an eager want. Say you could hype it up. You could play it down. Find out a way to cultivate that desire in them. Saying, you know, maybe they like it's Martin Luther King today. Maybe they're a big Martin Luther King fan person. And they just, they, they love the holiday. They made a bunch of posts about it on social media. Well, what you can do is, you know, Martin Luther King believed this too. And you can pull up a quote that's similar to what your way of thinking is. Bam, persuasion, done. So it's things like that. That's just an example. It's top of the dome. Next, next, next. He, he gives a lot of examples and stories I'm not going to go into. Better be the one to smile than to not smile back. That is a quote by Brian Tracy. I love it. I'd smile at people and some people smile, don't smile back. I'd rather be the one to smile than not smile back. What does that say about you and your attitude? So smile is, an, is the second part. It's so simple, so easy. It actually changes your physiology. It changes your emotions. You want to feel appreciative of. You want to feel you know thankful. All you got to do is smile and that'll help with that process become genuinely interested in other people you can do this find out what not only they can give to you find out you know their story I know when I find out about someone's story about the shit they went through all the troubles I'm like boom I'm so fascinated and enthralled by them I may have judged them when I first met them I may have you know Thought some way preconception prejudice about them at first. Maybe, I was, maybe I was, I didn't drink enough water, but I was tired and I made a judgment. But when I find out about people's story, boom! I just I said, why do I always do that? Why, or why do I do that sometimes? Not always, because I don't always do that. But if I do, right, we're human. We do things like that. I find out their story, and I'm just, in, I'm just infatuated by it. And it's like, whoa, this person's so cool. And you find out the sh the, the trouble they overcame. And it just makes a difference, and I become so much more interested in them. So that's a big thing, finding out about their failures and their feet and their setbacks. and It makes a difference, it, it, and then you can connect with them. So that's one way to do that. He goes a lot more into the house. Next one, remember the person's name. is Remember that a person's name is to the person the sweetest and most important sound. You hear the sound doesn't mean much. It means like attention. But a person's name. If I were to say your name. It is the most important sound in any language. Of any sound. Okay. People say Doug. Dougie. Yep. I'm just like boom. Boom. I'm right there. I'm interested. People shout me out. I'm all about it. I'm Because I. It's important to me. It's just. We've heard it when we were little. When we were babies. So. It's it's a powerful. Saying their names. It's There's tricks to remember names. You, you got to mo be motivated to remember their name. If, if I were to give you $50,000 you, in a suitcase, if you remember the next person's name, you met damn sure straight, you'd remember their name. So find out tricks, uh, find asking questions, repeat it when, hey, you're Bob, 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 is that what the name is? Cool. W why Bob? Oh, my dad named me it after this guy. It's interesting. My name was Doug after Doug Collins, the NBA basketball player for the 76ers, former coach of the 76ers. So my dad named me after him. Which was cool. I like the name. So, if you can find out more about the name, it's going to help you remember it. Just try tricks like that. Where does it come from? What's the name mean? What's its origin? And then you could do things like Mary. Oh, your name is Mary? And in your mind, not out loud, of course, Mary had little lambs. Mary had three little lambs. Jake. Ah, uh, Jake, Jake, Jake the snake. Jack. Jack, Jack, and Jill. Boom. Just create these little things. So, name is very important and it's, not, it's difficult because I don't always get it, but if we could practice that, it's huge. Game changer. All right, four. I'm going to go a little faster. Become a good listen, listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. 
So listening, I'm just going to say we got two ears, one mouth for a reason, okay? If you scramble the words, listen around, it, you see silent. So just do that and listen. But you can do active listening where you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, repeat what they say. So listening is very important. Uh, encouraging them to talk is just by asking them questions, shifting the topic from you to them. They're asking about you, boom, say something, but boom, be really interested about how that come. You know, you're working there now, cool. How'd that, how'd you get a job there? Boom, keep it going. This, this, this stuff, this, I should put, I should charge money for this video. It's so good because of this stuff can really transform your life. Okay, next. Talk in terms of other people's interests. Don't just think about yourself. It would be advantageous for you to, when a situation occurs, saying, oh, that'll be great for Julian, man. man that's going to help you get that goal you've been trying to get. Boom. Or that's going to help you stay away from that cigarette. It's going to help you. Boom, boom. And it just helps them value you because you value them. Okay. Make the other person feel important. Do it sincerely. Okay. There's ways, there's strategies on how to do this. Just focus. How can I make them feel important? How can I make them feel valued and appreciated is a great way to do that. All right. Next one. Win people to your way of thinking. Okay, how are we going to do that? It's 12 ways. Let's go through them. The only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. Celebrity Soul, Grant Cardone, he talks about agree. Just agree with people at first. I can't buy it. I It's okay. I agree. You know what? But, you know, boom. Bring up another benefit. I don't want to come with you, Doug. I, I understand. And you, you don't have to come with me. But you could come with me and this would happen. Boom. It's like avoid arguments. Avoid extreme ideologies. They might be a Republican. A uh, Democrat. Well, why do you like it? Interesting. Why is, oh, oh your dad liked it. Int okay. And then you just, you, arguments never go nowhere. But uh, a destruction in the relationship, a avoidance of being around you. So do your best to avoid it. This is still true today. Healthy debates are good, but arguments are the opposite of awesome. Now, principle two, show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say, you're wrong. You're wrong. It's the stupidest thing you can say. People say this to me. I'm like, did you not read, did you not read how to win friends and influence people? My dad says this to me sometimes. He's like, you're wrong, Dougie. And I'm like, Okay, I don't take it personal. Second agreement, four agreements, but it, you want to punch someone's ego, this will do it, and they will not like you. So you want to stroke people's ego, and that's what this book will help you do. And, it, and it's beneficial for you. So next, so just don't say you're wrong. Say, did you ever look at it this way? Or what made you think that? Or in my experiments, I felt this, and this is what I found. Felt found method, that's powerful. So we got principle three. If you're wrong, admit it quickly and emphatically. If you make a mistake, own up to it fast. Next, begin in a friendly way. Smile, name. Interested in them. That's what correlates to that. Get so don't just don't just like people do this. They get right to business. Take five, ten minutes not to talk about business. Take two minutes not to talk about business. Begin in a friendly way. How's the family? Cool. Yo, with them eagles the other day. This stuff is, oh, it's just, I'm telling you, I should be paying, this is so valuable. Read the book. He goes in depth and he goes deep. Get the other person saying yes, yes, immediately. This is like sales and stuff. If you get people in the momentum of agreeing with you, that momentum is going to continue. You see how that, you see how that is? And you're saying yes, yes, right now. I almost got you. So it's powerful. It's really, really love. I love this stuff. Let the other person do a great deal of, of the talking. I try and do this 80 20 on dates sometimes with people I'm doing business with. Just let them, people love themselves. I know I, I love myself. So let them show it, let them feel good. And it, it goes a long way. Like it goes a long way. You could you could talk about yourself, but you go, it goes a short way. It's all about you. But psh, okay, think of it that way. Let the other person feel the idea is his or hers. 
unless there's money on the line, I always do this. Unless like this is my idea and I'm gonna make profit off of it, this then the idea should be the other person should say, I might have thought of it, but I wanna make them feel like it's they feel so good, it's I did it. You see kids, they make some food. They'll eat whatever it is they make because they made it. And if it's their idea to cook it, they're even more about it. So make people feel like, let's go to this conference. Let's go to this seminar. Okay, and a week later, like, yo, we should go to that seminar. Yo, that's a great idea. We should. Boom. So just always shift it. I might recommend a food. They might recommend a food. That's the idea. Do it, do it, do it. Boom. It's their idea. They feel incredible. Try honestly to see things from other pe person's point of view. I mentioned this a couple times. So I'm looking at you over here. But what if we turn the camera and you looked at me from here? It's slightly different. Now I'm sitting over here. Everything looks good. You can now see the books. You can see the books behind me. Oh, <gasps> wow. Jim Rohn in a seminar talks about you see it over there, up at the top. Have you ever, have you ever came down here and looked at it this way? Everything gets shifted. Everything's different. Everything, it's just powerful. So if it's good, you learn a lot too. You really learn a lot. So seeing it from their point of view, they feel understood, right? Fifth uh, habit of highly effective people. What is it? Seek first to understand, then to be understood. So it's game changing. You got me saying game changing a lot. Julian, because I'm seeing it from his point of view, and I love it. I love the word. Now I'm using it. It's rubbing off, but I'm I'm around positive people. You don't. I could see objectively a point of view from someone who's maybe broke, sick, depressed, and I don't like it. But I see it. I see it. I get there. Boom. I know I don't want to get there. Now I know what I don't want, and I can focus more on what I do want. And now I'm even more aligned with my purpose. I'm even more anchored into my mission. So. It, that's what it could do. It's only good can come from that if you come from that objective place knowing your values and the value of that practice. Lastly, be sympathetic with other people's ideas and desires. What does it mean? Well, if you're understanding, empathetic, sympathetic about other people's desires, what that'll do is it will allow them to open up more it will allow you to go deeper into the relationship and ultimately you can get what you want so this book will help you do that last final things here the fourth one is being a leader wait did I get the no we got we got more no we get it if you're wrong never say it wrong Good, wrong pace. So I went over a lot. This is the last stretch here. The last stretch. We went over the nine here. Good. Final ones. This is on being a leader. Okay. We talked about the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Uh, it's in the book club. I'm not going to put a link to it. Just check out the book club and you'll see it right in the book club channel playlist. So that goes deep on leadership. Let's see Dale Carnegie's perspective. He talks about begin with praise and honest appreciation. Again, similar to the one before. Call attention to people's mistakes indirectly. You don't want to just hammer at them. Maybe say objective. We don't have to say who did it right in front of everybody, which goes into the another one, which is save face. That's uh, principle number five. Let the other person save face. You see leaders do this. You see bosses do this. They take you around back, take you to the side, they take you after the day, and they bring up the point. You did this, this, and this. Uh, you were supposed to do this. I'd like you to do this from now on. And this way you don't get embarrassed in front of everybody. So you got to do the same thing because it's just the person will... If you if you call out a person in front of everybody, they're going to hate you. They're going to get mad. They're going to want revenge. Avoid that enemy. Uh, Meek Mill calling out Drake. Calling out 50 Cent in front of everybody. Well, it's hurting the guy's career. Maybe it's helping him if he can leverage it and alchemize it into charity or something. But saving face, if you just... Talk to them, yo, text them, like, yo, bro, I, I gotta be open up and be vulnerable and be honest here and, you know, call you out on this, like, man to man. Why? Are you, are you not writing your lyrics? Because I don't respect that if that's so. Boom. Done. Didn't have to have that whole fiasco fight. So, this is something interesting. Save face. Ask questions instead of giving direct orders. If you get one thing from this, this could be it. 
if you just tell someone to do something, if you say, hey, man, you know what would make us better for both? If, if we got, if we could get that, how could, if we could get some water, how could we get water? Boom, they'll run over and get the water. There's so many different ways to go about this. Ask questions instead of giving orders. Okay? Man, I wish I could make this video an hour because I really could. Comment below if, if you want me to because I will. Like, I'll go over this stuff again. We could, I could go a lot deeper into it. Talk about your mistakes before criticizing the other person. He gives a good example in this book. But I'm going to give one of my own. I could say, hey, you know, I've been hurt before. I sprained my ankle. I broke my ankle. And I just want you to be safe. When you do the plyometric jumps, just make sure you're doing it on a solid surface. And it's lined up structurally right so we don't get hurt. I don't, I don't want you to make the mistake I did. Simple. So there's so many different ways you can go about this. Talk about your mistakes. And then it'll lighten them up. They won't be so rigid. They won't be in attack mode. Yield yourself by saying, you know, I didn't plan my day and I, I just get off track and I was off course. I was off course. I was off course until I fell down the Niagara Falls River. And when I heard that, I couldn't stop it. I tried to put my oar in the water, basically. And bec that's like my metaphor for not planning the day. So I want you to plan your day in advance. Because if you don't run the day, the day will run you. So plan your day in advance. And now I can tell you this. And it's like I'm opening up about my mistakes. You know, I didn't drink water and I was I was tired and I fall asleep in class. But when I started drinking water, I was hydrated and I had energy and I stayed and I I got better grades. I got straight A's just because I drink water. So I'm telling you, drink water. It would be resourceful for you. See how much more effective that is? Implement this and it will give you extraordinary results. You might be getting ordinary results. Apply these principles, it's extraordinary. Let's look into the last few. Home stretch here, guys. Hope you're writing these down. Let praise be the foundation. Let He says, praise the slightest improvement. So let praise of just the smallest improvement be your focus. Praise the slightest improvement and praise every improvement. Be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise. So he goes into this. He uses like old school terminology. You want to praise as often as you can. I think he mentioned this like three times. If you read Lewis Howe, School of Greatness, gratitude every chapter. So always, because if I, I mentioned it before, what you appreciate appreciates. This is good for relationships with your romantic, family, and friendship. All three. Even yourself. I do this in my own mind. Dougie, good job. You you did vegan for a week. Let's reward yourself for the nice Whole Foods $15 friggin' buff full plate. And that's the reward. Patting yourself on the back, on the brain, back of the head, whatever. All right, last two guys. Give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. Elliot Hulse. Does this extremely well. Dougie, you're an adventurer. So it makes me want to travel and be an adventurer. Go to LA. Go to San Fernando. Go to San Diego. Go to Phoenix. Go to Vegas. Boom, boom, boom. Because like that's my identity. I'm adventuring. I'm seeking thirsting knowledge. Like I'm thirsting. Ah, water. I'm quenching that thirst by adventuring out and expanding and exploring. So that actually identity supported me. He told me, Dougie, man, nobody squeezes the life at it like you do. You enjoy everything. So that makes me want to enjoy everything. So he's a leader because he's applying that principle. Okay? How can you tell someone, wow, you're spontaneous. Wow, you're adventurous. Man, you're a good public speaker. You're a great cook. Give them that. Even if they're not a great cook, say you're a great cook and they'll become a great cook. Jonathan Von Goethe mentions this. Don't, if you treat a man as he is, he takes it a step further. He says, action. If you treat a man as he is, he'll remain as he is. But if you treat a man as what he could be, he will then raise up to what he could be. Whoa. So, the view, the viewer watching this, I'm saying you're a great student. Now, if you're not taking notes, and you hear that, and I didn't say this, you would want to, Grab your notebook again, start because I called you a great student. So for being a great student, 
you're gonna apply this and get massive success find a mentor you know things are great thing great things are coming for you because you're a great student right now and keep being a great student but I appreciate you for being a great student right now boom boom I just applied like three of the, three of the principles and last but certainly not least encouragement use encouragement make the fault seem easy to correct you did this but you know what it's all good because we all we gotta do is just get back on track again so you can do that you know that's an easy tool and then there's one more I missed here make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest so shoot make a book club and by doing it you'll feel really well you'll feel like you're a sense of contribution you'll be accountable for reading and you will deeper integrate the knowledge of the book so yeah it's great you started a book club keep it up it's an example of me doing it i know throwing down a challenge was one of these i couldn't find it he, he named those were some of the names he names so those are the principles but there's names for them as well so there's like two names for each one which is pretty cool but yeah guys cop the book how to win friends and influence people influence is leadership so it's another book on leadership but communication and persuasion this is the foundational rock build your house on the rock and it won't fall over this is you don't want to miss out on relationships relationships is love relationships is life so value this i highly recommend it from my experience this one's a game changer. I know Brandon Carter says it's his number one book. We were out in Beverly Hills and we were, you know, we were with Ty Lopez, R.C. Tyler, and Michael Morelli. And, and I was asking him, what's your favorite book? He said, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dougie. And it was really cool. Really cool. So that's it. Next book I'm going to do. Let's see what I got in here. You know what book I'm going to do next? This one right here. I'm almost done it. World Class Speaking by 1999. Public Speaker of the Year, Craig Valentine. And I love this book. I got, you can see I got some good notes from it, right? That's the next book. Stay fresh. Stay blessed. Hope you wrote these down. If not, watch it again, write them down. And get the book and put it in your journal. And I challenge you to live one of these every single day. Pick one of these every day for like a month. And just, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to... Be a good listener today. I'm going to encourage other people to talk about themselves just for today. And then it'll become part of you. So stay fresh, stay blessed. Peace.